Hi guys, welcome to this video about Venn diagrams. So the agenda for this video is just to give you a little bit of background on Venn diagrams, give you a visual illustration of how Venn diagrams work, some basic definitions, formulas and relationships, and a few basic examples. So let's get to it. So the background on Venn diagrams. A Venn diagram is an illustration that uses circles to show the relationships among things or finite groups of things. Circles that overlap have a commonality, while circles that do not overlap do not share their traits. Venn diagrams help to visually represent the similarities and differences between two concepts. Venn diagrams were introduced by John Venn in the 1880s. So, a visual representation of a Venn diagram. So if, just look at a very basic example, we have set A and set B. So you, you, you will have elements that are only in A, elements that are only in B, and elements that are in A and B. So the, the section in the middle is called the intersection. So that's the, all the elements that are both in A and B. So you'll see a lot of elements that you find in A will also be in B, and elements in B will also be in A. So, some basic definitions. Probability that it is A or B, which is shown by this, the following formula, which is known as the union. Then, we have probability of A and B, known as the intersection. Then, for probability of not A, known as the complement. And then, lastly, we have the probability of A given B, where the condition is that it should be part of B. So this probability is just the probability that we will see A, given that it's already probability B, which is usually found in the intersection between A and B. So the basic formula that is mostly used for Venn diagrams is the following. The probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B less probability of A and B. So if you look at the first circle diagram here, you'll just see where each of the probabilities falls in. So, the first section probability A, you'll see that the section of the intersection between A and B is highlighted, with the second for probability B, the, the middle section is highlighted again. So, you're basically adding the middle section twice, so that's why you have to remove the probability of A and B, just to remove the double counting issue. And that will give you probability of A or B. So, the basic relationships that can be used in formulas. So, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Next, we have the probability of A plus the probability of not A equals 1. So, this is just a very simple formula. So, if it's A and if you add everything that's not A, you'll always get to 1 because everything that's not A will just be the remainder to get you to 1. So, if set A and set B are independent, then the following formula holds. Probability of A and B equals the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. If set A and set B are mutually exclusive, then the following holds. Probability of A and B equals zero. So, let's get into some examples. So, if you're given the following information, probability of A equals 0 0.8, probability of B equals 0 0.4, Probability of A and B equals 0 0.3, A and B not mutually exclusive, then what is the probability of it being A or B? So here we can just use the basic formula that I mentioned earlier, which would eventually give us an answer of 0 0.9. So this is, this is just a very, very easy example, just to use this basic formula and just substituting in the values. Next, we'll look at the example 2. More or less the same given information, but now A and B are mutually exclusive. So again, we want to calculate the probability of it being A or B. We again start by using the basic formula. Then, since A and B are mutually exclusive, we know that the probability of A and B equals zero. So that part of the formula we can just take away. So the probability of A or B would just be 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 to give you an answer of one. So now, the only difference from the previous example now would be that A and B are independent. So again, we want the probability of it being A or B. So since A and B are independent, we know that the probability of A and B is just equal to probability of A times probability of B. 
And since we, we have both these values, we can easily calculate it. So, therefore, the probability of A or B is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 less 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, which would give you an answer of 0 0.76. So, then another example. Now, you're, you're still given the probability of A, probability of B, and now they're also giving you probability of A or B. Now you have to calculate the probability of it being A and B. We can use the basic formula again, but now we'll just have to reverse the formula to get probability of A and, prob and B on the, on the left side. By doing this, we would get an answer of 0 0.3. So, the last example. We're given that probability of B is equals 0 0.4 and the probability of A and B equals 0 0.2. So, if we need to calculate the probability of A given B, we can just use the basic formula of probability of A given B equals probability of A and B divided by probability of B. Therefore, the probability of A given B is 0 0.5. You'll notice in most of these examples, you just have to use the basic formulas and just usually move them around or just substitute in the values and just look at what you're given and then you'll easily get to the answer. This is usually most of the questions that you get on Venn diagrams, you'll be able to do this. Thank you for your time. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll try to post regular videos on stats, math mathematics and Excel functions. And if you want to see any specific topic covered in a video, please leave the topic in the comments. Have a good day.